watcher. In my recent review of this Royal Enfield Classic 350, I said that I think it's one of, if not the best, back road motorcycle you can buy. And most people agreed with me, uh, but a few people didn't. Of course I'm right, but I decided to put the theory to the test and I rode this bike and that bike on exactly the same road one day this bike one day the next bike to see if my theory is right or wrong but not only that I actually rode the BMW R18 on exactly the same route as well and you might be surprised at what I found out first of all let's define what we mean by back roads now back roads are obviously those little country lanes off the beaten track little narrow roads windy undulating blind brows blind bends detritus on the road now detritus is the official term for um, gravel and stuff that's left on the road surface and you get that a lot in this country uh, mainly because councils don't think it's their job to clean it up um, but you, you encounter all those sorts of things potholes little streets even in pretty villages and towns those little narrow roads that you can get through on a motorcycle uh, fairly easily so the back roads are what we're talking about in this video by the very nature of back road riding you're not going to be traveling at very high speeds we're talking about 10 miles an hour 20 miles an hour maybe up to 50 miles an hour on a straight bit of road uh, but generally you can't see over the next brow or corner and the road surfaces can be really appalling and take you by surprise so you tend to be pootling along at lower speeds and my theory was that a bike like this with that low power uh, is much more manageable and enjoyable at riding the back roads. On my test, that proved to be the case. It was wonderful. You don't have to worry about all that power. You're not holding much back. So when you've got a more powerful motorcycle, like the T120, for instance, as it's here, it's got a lot more power. So if you open the throttle, it will be moving extremely fast in no time at all. Whereas this, it won't, of course. Now, yes, you can ride this on the back roads. I've ridden the Triumph Speed Triple on little back roads. I've ridden Harley Davidson's on little back roads. I've ridden uh, the KTM Super Duke on little back roads, as well as other roads. So I do talk from experience here. And my findings were that the lower power bike, something like this, it doesn't have to be this, but this makes a very good example, they're just so easy to ride and so forgiving that you're less likely to get yourself into difficulties and you can enjoy the ride and enjoy the view much more than when you're trying to hold back a lot more power. On the very same roads on this Triumph T120, which you would describe as a mid-powered bike, a high-powered bike would be the Honda Fireblades, the Superbikes, the KTM Dukes, um, the Triumph Speed Triples, that sort of bike with tons and tons of power. This is a mid-powered bike and at lower RPM it will pootle along but it's not so happy at 2000 RPM which is about the RPM you'd be doing on some of these very narrow little back roads as that is that's much more happy and much easier and much more forgiving than this is and of course if you let the revs build on this it starts to accelerate much more quickly than that does and whilst in a lot of situations that can be and is very enjoyable sometimes less is more and really i do think that this still makes the better back road bike for those reasons now i don't know about you but if you're riding along somewhere pretty you tend to sort of be in your mind in your thoughts you're looking around at the beautiful views and you're not going fast um, but you can get caught out you can hit a pothole that you didn't see you can get into the rough gravel in the middle of the road and find yourself in a bit of a situation and i actually did that on this and on this um, but more so on this i found and when you're in that situation you could be thinking about the view you go along you come out to a corner and there's detritus in the middle of the road and you suddenly imagine gosh if there was a car coming i wouldn't be able to brake because i'm in this gravelly bit and it makes you think, yeah, concentrate, concentrate on what you're doing. Before I go any further, um, probably get people commenting who haven't watched the whole video saying, oh, you're saying that bike's not as good as this bike. Uh, this, this bike is amazing, 
absolutely amazing and the better bike if you perhaps want to go further longer distances at faster speeds it accelerates better it's faster top speed etc it's a wonderful motorcycle and of course it will do the back roads as well but if your main aim in getting a motorcycle is to explore the little back roads then this is really a better option and that's the better all-rounder it just so happens that i was watching a video yesterday on youtube a chap on a BMW GS adventure bike was riding the very same road that I rode these two bikes on and he came along and found himself in the middle of the road on the detritus, that gravelly stuff, and obviously couldn't brake so he came off onto the side of the road and he then crashed the bike as he tried to get back onto the road. Perhaps he could have stayed off on the side of the road and tried to stop but in a split second you don't always have that um, benefit of time to think. And that's another reason why this bike being low powered, low to the ground, easy handling uh, would make the perfect back road bike because adventure bikes are very top heavy and very tall and very big and very cumbersome and not always the best in those sort of situations. Let's try and help uh, get the point across with a little analogy. Think of this like a really good quality walking boot, a very comfortable, very supportive boot that you put on and you can walk all day for miles and miles very comfortably very happily this is your trainer you can run in it it's got a bouncier sole more spring but perhaps for walking it's not quite as comfortable and then you could have at the other end of the scale with your ktm dukes and your speed triples and your fire blades those sort of bikes that's your running shoe with spikes and you could go for a walk with your spikes, but you wouldn't be very happy in your spikes. You'd be much better in your nice, comfortable walking boot. So that's what this bike is. It's the walking boot of motorcycles. That brings me on nicely to the BMW R18, which I rode on the very same back roads as these two bikes. And one thing you need to understand with the R18, and the same applies to the Harley Davidsons, the big cruisers, uh, the Milwaukee 8 engines and the uh, engines before that, the 110, the 103, they have immense torque at low RPM and they're very, very happy burbling along at low RPM. You've got like that pop, 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 and they love it. They can go on all day like that. And that makes a very enjoyable ride on the back roads because they don't need to rev uh, to be enjoyable and you, you're using that torque. Of course, if you open it up, you've got immense torque and it's huge, but all that torque is at the lower end. And as the revs build, it sort of tails off slightly and you don't get that surge. You, you, your immediate surge is at the beginning and that's more controllable. Whereas a bike like this and a much more powerful bike, name the bike anything more powerful, at low RPM they will go along and, and the power, if you looked at the, the power on the torque curve, it's very low. It's not giving out much power at 2,000, 2,500 RPM. As you hold the throttle open, the revs build and you get that sort of feeling where it all comes in later in the rev range. And that's what perhaps makes a less enjoyable back road bike because once you're in that high rev range, it's not where you want to be where you're on the little windy roads where you don't know what's going to be around the next bend. We've got a bike coming hopefully soon, fingers crossed, that will be a bit of a surprise to all of you. Uh, so stay tuned for that. If it comes off, it's gonna be a good one. So hopefully if you've been able to read between the lines in what I'm saying, is that it's like the saying horses for courses. You choose the right horse for the course you're riding. Uh, so if your course is the little back roads mainly, you want the right horse for the job, which is this one, if you do a multitude of different things, this is your better option if you want to go faster, if you want to travel further at higher speeds. And then of course, if you want to go mad, like Barry Sheen, uh, then you'll want something very fast. And if you don't know who Barry Sheen is, that shows your age and it shows my age. Um, but there we go, that's the, the purpose of having different bikes for different purposes. So one isn't better than the other, but it might be better at a purpose than the other. This Triumph is going back in a couple of days and I'll miss it, it's been a great bike, I really do love it. Uh, the Royal Enfield Classic 350 is staying with us for a few months so we've got lots of videos planned with this bike so stay tuned for that because there's some interesting rides coming out.